All right, y'all, World of Concrete, day two. We're gonna start off some tools and I got a celebrity. We're gonna go check out Diablo and DeWalt first. Let's get going. You're kind of in my way. What? You're in my way. I was doing this row. Go around. <laughs> <laughs> the famous Tim Mueller. Can you believe it, Tim? Of all the gin joints. Of all the places to see you <laughs> at the DeWalt booth. Yeah. Power shift. Brand new from these guys, Tim. What do you think? Uh, is in. That was turtle. I don't think I could control it in rabbit. I know rabbits. Rabbit's serious, man. <laughs> we would have been like jumping off this thing. This thing is not light. This feels like a gas machine to me. Yeah. Um, like 130 pounds, something like that. More than I can lift. That's a lot, dude. Yeah. So tell me about this battery system. What have we learned so far about this power shift? Well, we're supposed to get plenty of runtime for at least what we're going to use. Yeah, they were saying that I think on this machine we get like 36 minutes of yeah. continuous trigger time, right? Yeah, yeah. I like that expression, trigger time. Yeah, that's kind of good. So for us, like, we're going to be on and off the machine, so that's at least an hour. Yeah. And I think these things charge in less than an hour. That's a pretty big deal. So two batteries, the charger, and the jumping jack. That's all we need. That's, that's for sure. Yeah. Now, the other interesting thing that I learned about the battery pack system, Tim, is that when these charge, you can actually charge two batteries at a time in less than an hour on a 15 amp breaker. Yeah. How yeah. many times have breakers trip for you on the job site? Too often. <laughs> too numerous. Yeah, we to have tell. way too many chargers plugged into the same circuit. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I like too that um, with the adapter, we can use our old FlexVolt stuff. That's pretty awesome. That adapter allows you to slide that FlexVolt battery in. Now, you're obviously not going to get as much runtime as yeah, these big yeah. old batteries, but how many times have you gotten to the end of a battery and you're like, shoot, I just need to continue this line of saw cut it's another Murphy's five lot, feet right? or we're, we're 10 feet short exactly so we can go just pull a battery off one of our other tools this is a big reveal for dewalt and it looks like they've got a bunch of other tools in this same system coming out Plate too. compactor concrete vibrators power screeds that's a lot of stuff man. yeah that's serious business yeah stuff that requires a lot of juice now how does this compare to some of their competitors just in a quick overview from from what you've seen here today i think the big advantage is that it's backwards compatible yeah some of the others, it's a whole separate battery platform. Yeah. And then you have to have two separate power tool lines, basically. That's right. But at least this, you know, we can use our other DeWalt stuff. I mean, if we need to. Yeah. Right. We're going to use these 99% of the time. And that one hour charge time is a big deal. And I do like that you can get two chargers on a single breaker yeah. and not have a problem. Yeah. Look to me like they spend a lot of time on the ergonomics, on the charger, the system, the batteries, all that. Well, and the battery's not that heavy. I mean, you could probably even hold it. I yeah, I could get it. 11 pounds, I think is I mean, what they said. it's not bad. It's, it's really not, bad, not that yeah. bad. It's not terrible. It feels very doable at no, this battery. No, at lunchtime, you can, you can do your Pilates and your curls. I don't think I could quite get an 11 yeah. pound curl. I think I could. But you stick with it, you'll get them. Someday I'll yeah, get there, get your Tim. Muscles. All right, so here's the other thing you need to know about this. This is coming soon. This isn't available on shelves today. They're telling us at DeWalt this is coming in September. So we still have a couple months to wait to actually buy this. But I'm impressed. I mean, they've got a giant display here. They've got all the things from prepping the slab uh, all the way to finishing, to cutting, to coring. This is a big launch on a battery system. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm excited. My mission coming to World of Concrete was basically this. Yeah. Since we're doing some of our own dirt work, digging utility ditches, we need to be able to comp. For me, I can flood any gas motor and get so frustrated. So yes. I just want to be able to pull up and hit a start button. Yeah, and, and to have a system like this, you change the batteries on all these interchangeably and that thing always starts, that's impressive. Yeah. The other thing that's really cool about this is really low maintenance. They were telling us that really the only thing you gotta maintain is there's oil in here, probably some hydraulic oil. It needs to change after 500, 500 hours. hours. So and you're gonna go a long time until you get hit 500 hours. Uh, yeah, especially for us. Plus we got the service alert right there that's gonna tell us. Yeah, that's pretty nice. Sealed yeah. motor, I think this is gonna start first time every time we are oh, on the Oh, and job asset side. management on the battery and the tool. That's right, they've so got their Bluetooth them. system too, know so where they're know at where things sure are. That they're still in the fleet. <laughs> this is a big deal from DeWalt. Nice job, guys. Very impressive new reveal here at World of Concrete. So stay tuned for this system coming in September to all those big retailers out there.
And Tim, thanks for being on the Build Show. Guys, if you don't know Tim Mueller, you're crazy. I don't know how you've missed them. <laughs> awesome framers on Instagram, giant feed, super, super fun. And whether you're a framing contractor or not, you need to go follow Tim. Yeah, I mean, you got nothing better to do. You might as well just follow our account, right? You definitely should. But he's also <laughs> got a giant YouTube channel that's growing like a weed. So go follow Tim on, on his YouTube channel, too. I'll put that link in the description below. Thanks for having me, Tim. Yep, yep. All right, guys, we'll see you all later. World of Concrete 2024. Right, guys, coming to you from the Diablo booth. Tim, what is it that's interesting here at the Diablo booth? Okay, so the big problem with drilling concrete is the dust, right? Yep, yep. And we've tried all these different bits that are hollow with vacuum systems, they get clogged. So what Diablo showed us yesterday is they take their full bit and they basically just put a sleeve on it. Oh, okay, and so, so this sleeve, is a regular bit, basically. It's a regular bit and with the, uh, the Diablo bits, we can cut rebar. Oh, wow. We don't want to cut rebar, right. but sometimes we cut rebar, yep. right? But the big advantage is it being a sleeve is that as we're drilling the hole, we're capturing that dust 97%, which wow. will demonstrate. Yep. Which means when I'm drilling, I don't really need my uh, PPE. That's fantastic. Yeah. And the price point's very reasonable too. And if you compare this to some of the other systems, you can just tell looking at it that we've got way more open space. It's really going to do a good job of extracting and not ch and not uh, clogging. And the, there are parts that are interchangeable. So they've got the line for SDS plus. The line for SDS Max. And this is the Max, obviously. Yeah, and the that big boy. To the vacuum. So let's do a little bit of a test. They're going to let us actually drill on this concrete wall. Why don't we start with the standard bit and okay. show how much dust comes out? And then we'll do the same test with this guy. Yeah. Sound good? Sounds good to me. All right, let's check it out. Where do you want to drill, Tim? Um, we'll go right here. So, in fairness, I'm going to let the first one second of dust go, then I'm going to slide it into catch and we'll see how it okay. does. Okay. Ready? Yep. Go ahead, brother. So we hit rebar. Look at that dust. Yeah, so if you, yeah, go ahead and move that. Oh Maybe. my gosh. Let's see if we can put Let's it out without, that one. without breaking it. Okay. Oh my gosh. Isn't that amazing? That's crazy, dude. Oh, sorry. My fault. Whoa. All right, so there's your comparison right there. <laughs> Look at that. That's, That's crazy. That's why yesterday, a few of us that have to drill concrete, we're like, that's huge. Yeah, that's huge. Yeah, I don't want to overuse the game changer. Yeah. That's kind of a game changer. That's kind of a game changer. Talk to me about price. So like we might typically buy the hollow bits for 200 bucks. Yep. This will be about 50. Oh my gosh. What is that, a quarter? If I do my wow. math right? That's crazy. Yeah. And you can use anybody's drill, anybody's vac system, all yes. that kind of stuff. Yeah. So it's pretty universal. Yeah. So, I mean, good price point. And look at that, guys. Like, that's to me, this crazy. is worth 200 bucks. Oh, 100%. But now we get 50, 50 bucks. Yeah, that's a big deal. Yeah. Way to go, Diablo. Very impressive. This is called the Amped Rebar Demon. And I'm assuming you're going to see this at all the major uh, places that you can yeah, buy. Everywhere we can get Diablo, we're going to be able to buy this. That's pretty awesome. Is it on yeah. the market now? Do you know? Is it on the market? No. Not yet. It's, it's coming soon. It's coming soon. Okay. That's the thing about World of Concrete. We get to try it all. We get to try it's it all. It's coming soon. <laughs> very soon. Very, very cool. Thanks, Tim. Appreciate you being on with me, brother. Yep. Thank you. World of Concrete, this outdoor display is fantastic. And of course, when I saw this giant machine, I knew what I was going to see. This is cool. 3D printing that a builder can actually buy the equipment. Check it out. We've filmed a bunch with Icon in Austin and seen some awesome 3D printing. This is definitely the future of construction. But you can actually literally purchase these machines from this company. I met the inventor, the founder of the company, uh, very nice man, and I had to translate because he, uh, he only spoke Chinese. But what you're looking at here is a smaller unit and a bigger unit. These sell for 1.2 and 1.5 million, but you can roll these out to any job site in America and run them. And here's what's interesting about these guys is, you know, when I was talking with Icon, they're real, um, uh, I don't know, secretive maybe about their secret sauce. But these guys tell me that when it comes to the ingredients that actually go into the mix, 
You know, you're just using regular local sand, nothing special, regular local cement. So 80% of the mix is just your regular local ingredients. And then here's where the secret sauce is. This is coming from these guys. So this is about a 20% mix. And just like, uh, you know, the guys that are mixing concrete on site in those big machines, that's what's happening here. So those raw ingredients, the water, their special sauce, uh, the Portland mix, and the sand are all going into this machine, which is automatically figuring out the mix. Another cool thing that was happening here is they've got some different nozzle types. So they were printing yesterday. This whole display here got printed yesterday. A bunch of different options. And as you walk around the display here, they've got photos of all the different things they've printed. I wish I could make a trip to China to see it. Looks to me like they've done a bunch of buildings, including the world's tallest 3D printing building was by this company. So the website is GaudiTech.us. Very interesting. This is definitely why you want to come to World of Concrete is to see a display like this. Very cool. Okay, so this is interesting. When I first heard about Fiberglass Bar, I only knew about maybe one company. Now at this show, I'm seeing lots of companies, several companies, including these guys. This is a big player in the industry, right? You guys know the pink guys. Check it out. They got pink bar. Now, my understanding is they've actually been doing this for a couple of years now. This is their seventh or eighth year they've been doing it, and they're seeing massive growth in the marketplace. And when I walked up to the booth, their product manager said, oh, you're in Austin, Texas? Your mayor is driving this from a sustainability standpoint. I thought that was interesting. I hadn't thought about that. You know, uh, steel is very energy intensive. So if you want to take out some of that energy intensity, going to fiberglass makes a big difference. And this, this is a vertically integrated company, right? They've been making fiberglass insulation for years now to make a switch and make rebar that's pretty interesting so i think uh my guess is there's i don't know maybe six or seven fiberglass rebar companies here at world of concrete but it's like one percent or less you know probably 0.1 percent of the marketplace because there's so much steel rebar out there so it's interesting to see multiple companies including this awesome and huge player in there I think that as we see time go on, we're gonna see a bigger and bigger percentage of that rebar on our construction sites going to fiberglass. Again, the outdoor display is a world of concrete, some really cool stuff. Check this out, I've never seen this before. mbcrusher.com, they make two smaller units that you can get on a skid steer, and they were doing a demos a minute ago. They've got these big pieces of concrete. When you're demoing concrete, how do you get rid of it? How do you break it down? How would you maybe even reuse it on a job site? This machine could do it for you. So this will take these, you know, seven, eight, 10 inch big chunks. It drops it in the jaws and it actually crushes it down such that you, depending on some equipment sizing, you can get it from maybe a two inch rock down to a three quarter minus. And then once you get it into that size, you could use it in all kinds of stuff around the job site. That could go into a driveway base. There's all. You could probably make that just about into riprap. There's all kinds of really cool options here. They make some bigger units too. They're not on display here, but they've got some that'll fit on some really big machines. I wasn't able to quite learn pricing. I can't imagine these are too inexpensive, but if you need one of these, this is a really cool piece of equipment that I've never seen before. More info at mbcrusher.com. Oh, here we go. We're about to run the machine. Let's check this out together. So it looks like he's just scooping that up like a typical, uh, you know, bobcat would. And then I believe he's gonna turn that vertical. Yep. That bucket's going vertical. And look, he's gonna dump it on this pile right here. This is really neat. By the way, I forgot to mention, you can see some rebar in there. If you've got rebar attached, the rebar is gonna spit out. And on some of their bigger units, They've got actually a, a magnet system that will separate that rebar automatically so you can recycle all that steel. Check that out, that's crazy. How cool is that? Here's one of the coolest things at World of Concrete right here, mbcrusher.com. This attachment on a Bobcat is picking up all that concrete that's being demoed out, including concrete that has rebar on it. And then it can output anywhere from two inch down to three quarter minus. They've got two sizes that'll fit on, uh, you know, skid steers, and they've got some that will fit on some real big equipment too. Absolutely fascinating. Isn't that wild? 
All right, y'all, we're at the MST bar. Let me introduce you to Jesse, an engineer with MST. Jesse, you know, we've come to the show before and seen fiberglass, and it feels to me as a builder like, gosh, this is a no-brainer. It's easier on the trades, way lighter weight. What, what in your mind is uh, limiting the adoption in terms of like, it's certainly being used, but why hasn't the whole world gone to fiberglass bar? Well, I think it's uh, a good question. Awareness, number one, it's, it's, it's not new. It's been around a while, but, yeah. but you know, construction industry, everybody does the things the same way they've been doing it for a long yeah, time. Sure. So that's do the true. engineers. So, uh, so speaking of that though, for those watching who don't know fiberglass versus traditional steel rebar, what is the benefits of going to fiberglass? Um, the, the category, let's call it, yeah. was, was introduced to, to battle corrosion. Yeah. Yeah. Whether it be in uh, bridge decks yeah. with de-icing salts or marine yeah. environments, uh, now you're talking about never having spalled concrete yeah. because it'll never corrode. That's right. And it's also stronger. So that 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 combination is really where it, it thrives. So uh, in other words, if we had a bigger bar, we could potentially go to a smaller bar and it would have the same amount of strength. So I think right. you mentioned earlier to me before we started filming, a number five bar, which all our, all our builder friends know is a five eighths inch round bar, could potentially get substituted by a number four bar, which is right. a half inch bar. Correct. Right. That's and, pretty and that, fantastic. And that just depends, like for all day long in your foundations and your slabs and, your, and most of your walls. Um, outside of that, we need to make sure everybody does a little engineering behind it, make sure that that's correct. Yeah. Uh, because sometimes, you know, miss conceptions are, oh, I can use it everywhere. And all right. of a sudden they get themselves in trouble. But yeah. for the most part, yeah, we're going to value engineer a little bit and we're going to use smaller bars in the concrete. Yeah. Fascinatingly, fascinatingly light. Check that out. They got a little display here. Think how heavy that cage would be with, uh, I don't know what that is, number six or eight bar or yeah, something in there. A, that's a six or seven. That's yeah. pretty wild. And that's super lightweight. It's no big deal to lift this. That would be a beast right. if that was traditional rebar. Now, one downside that you have to know about this is you can't make this bend in the field like you can with right. traditional steel, right? That's right. However, two things. We're very quick in producing these. Not okay. all companies can, but M MSC, I think, is that's our specialty is, is a speed of production on bent bars and quality. This gets tested and and not all fiberglass rebar created equal. Okay. So you got to keep that in mind. However, uh, the other idea would be uh, the code allows for a hybrid situation. So if you want to stay with straights oh, and fiberglass, and if you don't, if corrosion is not an issue, right? Let's, then you let's could look bend. at costs. Let's right. just do bent bars and steel and straight bars. So, and, you know, if you're in the Florida coast building a seawall, right. you're definitely going to want this. That's right. Uh, if you're maybe my buddy Wade who builds in Rhode Island on the coast, you're going to, this is going to make a big deal long term. Right. For me in Texas, central Texas, I'm not as worried about it. It might be a big weight issue and a strength issue for me. So yeah, then you, now I could, I could switch on my bends to traditional that's right. rebar. If that's the way you want to go, if you're just about cost and speed, that might be an option so you can keep your mind open to something like this in, the, in this category still. Yeah. Uh, don't let that not bending in a field stop you. Anything uh, different we need to think about for tying steel when it's fiberglass versus traditional rebar? Uh, no, I mean, I would say just think of it as the same way, whether it's a tie gun with tie wire or a hand tie with tie wire or in, in marine applications, uh, DOTs many times will, will specify either a zip tie. Oh, really? We've done here. Okay, so this isn't just a display. You actually could use zip ties. You can use zip ties or you can use epoxy coated tie wire. But oh, that's are, wild. That's kind of the two options if you want to go all non corrosive Right. Oh, that's crazy. Otherwise, don't worry about it, it's just a tie wire, it's not structural anyway. How fascinating. You know, as I've gotten into my 50s now, this display means a lot more to me than it did maybe a few years ago. So, I mean, this is really compelling. That's heavy and that is not a lot can of weight. Can you curl it? I don't know if I can actually curl it. We're gonna give it a shot though. You know, I have been exercising more now that I'm <laughs> in my like 50s. It. So I can curl it. <laughs> I can clean and jerk it too. You gotta be below your knees. And then, <laughs> oh my gosh, I could definitely clean and jerk this one. Wow, so 25% weight, that's legit. That that's is legit. way less weight. Holy cow, that's crazy. As our workforce ages, that's a really big deal. Guys, go check out uh, MST Bar. Really available nationwide, they're telling me. I'm sure on their website, you can get some more information. Hey guys, we're at the Phillips booth. Let me introduce you to Justin. Justin, you know, Almost every builder knows somebody who's had a heart attack. Right. And having a defibrillator nearby seems like an amazing idea, but I gotta be honest, I've always thought these were very expensive units. 
yeah. school us. You know, this is a, a concrete show, lots of GCs here. Why does a GC need a defibrillator? Well, you said the word heart attack, so these don't save you from a heart attack. Okay. It's sudden cardiac arrest, so two different, okay, two different gotcha. things. One's an Missed electrical, over. one's a plumbing issue, right? Gotcha. Um, so uh, there's a few different reasons why we go into cardiac arrest. Uh, Commodio cortis, which is impact to the chest. Okay. Or um, heat stroke can lead to cardiac yeah. arrest, which I think you guys probably Oh yeah, we're have in Texas, often. that's a big deal for us. Um, and just strenuous work um, can, can lead you into sudden cardiac arrest. So as far as pricing, it is uh, a little bit misleading that people think that these units are 5,000, 6,000. That's not. what I was assuming. Yeah, so they run from about uh, $1,000 up to 2500 Is that right? Depending, Not that much, really. Yeah, depending on the the what you need them for. So uh, we have the FRX here, which is our more durable. So this is going to be a unit that uh, would be more around the elements. So as far as extreme heat. Um, so you could keep this weather. in your truck, in other words. Yeah, so these go in fire departments. Um, these go on fire, fire rigs, uh, police departments, uh, lots of construction sites, energy companies. Um, this sit outside, so I mean, it can be up to 120 degrees or down to negative two. Okay, um, and what's a unit like this run? So this one right here, you know, uh, retail, you're looking at 2,200. Um, again, that's that's retail. Yeah. I mean, there's different- uh, There's some options out there. There's some options out there, <laughs> I mean, especially for larger construction companies that are sure. buying quantity, uh, quantity uh, devices, and I'm sure there would be- yeah. uh, some some bar some deals. Now Justin gave me a demo ahead of time, and I got to say, I was really impressed. These are very straightforward. They walk you through the whole process. You don't necessarily need to have gone through uh, CPR training like I have or other first aid training. You really could be somebody who doesn't know how to use it and figure it out on the heat of the, yeah. on the moment, couldn't you? Yeah, I mean, we like to say that they're dummy proof, right? So, yeah. um, you know, as long as you know where the device is, and, and if you have uh, knowledge of somewhat CPR. Um, you, you turn the device on, it's gonna tell you everything you need to do. Gotcha. Um, where to put the pads, it's gonna rate the heart for you. And this, uh, an AED is only gonna shock you if you are in ventricular fibrillation, so sudden cardiac arrest. Okay. Um, so we never, and no manufacturer has ever had an AED shock somebody who wasn't in, uh, in sudden cardiac arrest. Got so. it. Yeah. Impressive, man. Thank yeah. you, Justin. Yeah. Appreciate nice it. Nice to meet you. Thanks for I coming I think the by. big takeaway for me are these are way less expensive than I thought. I think I'm gonna think about these for my job sites, for my truck, and for my office as well. We'll see you later from World of Concrete 2024. We're at the Slab Shore booth. I've got Adrian, the inventor of this product. Adrian, Thank you. a good Texas boy. He's based in yes, Houston. Man. And Adrian, Texas guys know that Houston has some really bad soil. Yes, so indeed. if you've got a concrete foundation on bad soil, it's very likely that foundation may see some movement. Yeah. And that's the genesis of this product, right? Yep, that's right, that's right. So yeah. this is a foundation monitoring system yep. for concrete slabs so that you know, hey, I'm experiencing some movement. Will you talk right. me through the system? Yeah, yeah. So it comes from oil and gas. We know how oil wells move, and we had the aha moment said, if I can do this at 30,000 feet, how about right here in the house, standing in front of me? Yeah. Right. So what it's about, Matt, is you want to avoid cracks. Yeah, so in and Houston, you see this a lot. You see this a lot. You the see house this in has Houston. some movement differentially. Yeah. You know, there's more moisture on one side of the house. Right. The expansive clay pushes on it. Right. And we see uh, PV values of, you know, let's say 10 or more. Yeah. Yeah. in some really bad areas. My nerdy engineers know what we're talking about yeah. here. Yeah, the idea is, you know, you want to know a problem early. Problem right. well-defined is half solved, is what yep. we like to say. Yep. And that's exactly what we did here. So the system is actually very simple. Uh, we have a foundation monitor, the homeowner, I know that's who you're talking to, right? Yeah. The homeowner just sees this. Yep. It's a battery-operated computer. If you look back here behind you, Matt, this, this is a battery. There's a fluid level inside here. This is a computer that we designed. It's cellular. We don't need you need your Wi-Fi password or anything That's like cool. that, right? So the battery is taking readings. There's a fluid here, and then there's a tube that runs down here below the soil around the house. Okay, so around the house, Adrian, you've got a basically a band of this tubing yep. that would get attached to the foundation just below uh, the grass level. Let's call Correct. it right. Exactly. And and uh, let's say a hundred foot 
ring around the house would have about 10 locations. Is that exactly right? Exactly 10. About yep. every 10 feet. Yep. That's right. They're going to anchor in, and each one of those anchor points, there's a monitor that's how sensitive, Adrian? It's incredibly sensitive. So we, we can reach a third decimal place. We don't report that. Holy cow. Because right? at the end of the day, it's pressure, right? What we're looking at is what is the pressure of the fluid at this sensor versus the fluid inside of this head. Okay. Right? So it's just looking at the differential pressure and that's all, right? So when this first gets installed, basically the system turns on and it says, okay, these points are the zero. Yep. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a level line around the foundation oh, no. No, either. No, no, no. It could yeah. it could be off a little bit. Yeah. But then once that's set, it knows, okay, that's level zero. That's right. And did I understand that it's so right. sensitive that it could measure the height of a business card going up or down? That's right. Yeah. Our typical that's that's the typical accuracy we look for. Gotcha. Now at the end of the day, there's installation variations and things like that. Sure. So maybe make it a plus or minus a quarter to allow for some error in how you attach the screws. Okay. But the accuracy of the sensor is spot on Got all it. day long, every Got day. It. So what we do with that is we look at this data So this all is day a long. dashboard that's happening. Yes. The cellular is connecting. And then the contractor that installed it has this data that says. No. <laughs> Quite, not quite. Not quite, okay. No. So what we say, so let's say this is one of the sensors. Okay, got it. So right? I'm looking at a bird's eye view. Each one of yes. these blue dots is a sensor around right? the foundation. So one sensor has a serial number, and then over time, we're capturing all of those pressure points all day long. Okay. When a front comes in, cold front comes in, it affects our readings, right? Oh, interesting. So we have okay. to look at all of those pressures, and we're doing the math that says this status is green at this hour, right? You take all of that together, gotcha. and you have 250,000 data points, There's it gets a, a little bit too much. There's a right? lot of data going in here. So the homeowner doesn't care about this either. They just care, is my status green? Got it. But this is like the installing contractor. And by right. the way, this is not a DIY product. This is not a builder no, product no, even. No, no, no. You guys are selling through foundation repair guys, right? Uh, which are all over Texas and probably all over the US, frankly. All over the world. Yeah, all over the world. All over the world. Yeah, gotcha. we have customers in New Zealand. We have customers in uh, all over US yeah. and uh, our patents are global. That's right? awesome. So the, and then what this the is the dashboard that they're yeah. seeing. And each one of these is, a, is one of those points around the house. Is that right? Exactly. Okay. That's exactly right. So we, we need to keep it simple now, right? Nobody yep. cares about serial numbers. Yeah, yeah. You care about, here's my home. How is it moving here? Ah, right? So when gotcha. you take your mouth, this is all just a Google map. Yeah. You hover over that point. You can say, oh, that's this point, say, for example. This date versus that date, this hour and that hour, it's moved this exactly this uh, much. So we've moved, you know, let's say a half inch at that one spot, which means if I have expansive clays and it's just one spot of the foundation, that could be a sprinkler head that's uh, leaking. Exactly. It could be a yard line, water line that has a leak. That's right. And all of a sudden those clays are expanding just there. Yep. So then now that foundation contractor can say, hey, I think we got a problem on this northeast corner of your house. Let's fix it now before it comes a problem. That's exactly it. We want to keep it simple. The homeowner is just like the check engine light in your car, got right? It. Check yeah. engine light goes in the car. You don't have that diagnostic tool that says this is what's wrong and why. Got but it. the resellers do. That's and that's why after World of Concrete last year, we said we really need to sell this product to the resellers because the reseller is the one who can actually solve the problem. Right. They're the ones who can look at the data and say, you're overwatering, you're underwatering, right. you need to put in a French drain, mm -hmm. or this addition that you put on the house yeah. didn't get anchored right, we need to put some piers. Oh, that's and fabulous. so it's all about preventive maintenance yep. and being able to solve problems early. And I have a friend in Austin that had a foundation repair that when they were done, they were really kind of nervous, like, I wonder if this is gonna happen again. Yeah. How fabulous if they would have had this installed, they would have been able to know long term, hey, once that repair was done, nothing's moved. Or on the other hand, oh no, I'm having this one area. Why don't I solve that before it becomes a big problem? That's exactly it. it so it's now about I don't five... have cracks, I'm fixing it before that, right? That's right. And, and there's a second side to that as well. You're exactly right. Is the homeowner gets that peace of mind the day that that repair company leaves. Mm -hmm. But what about a year later? Right. 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 And when they go to sell that home. Oh, that's mm, a great point. Now I have resale. data that says, okay, it's been monitored for a year. And it's rock solid. After we pick the best company to do the repair work, it's still good. And that matters. That's because really now when cool. they go sell the home, you say, you know what? 
we'll be happy to transfer that data to you, yeah. but we're not gonna discount the house. We know the foundation is rock solid. Yeah. We have proof that it's rock solid. Oh, that's a big Not deal. just a good I think piece it of looks paper. Good. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because let's face it, you know well enough, it's very easy to fix sheetrock cracks, patch paint, patch flooring. You can do cosmetic work For and sure. make things look really, really good, right? Uh, that's really this cool. is the way to kind of make sure that it is good. That's awesome. So. Always fun to talk to the inventor of a product. Thank you. Uh, Adrian, coming. it sounds to me like if you're watching this video, you're interested. This is mm. this is really intended for foundation repair companies. So send this to your buddy who owns a foundation repair company and tell them about Slabsher. I appreciate it, Matt. Thank Thanks, you much. Appreciate World of Concrete 2024. Always some interesting stuff here. Thank you much. All right, y'all. We talked fiberglass rebar. Now let's talk about another product you may not have heard of. I got Pete here. Pete, how's it going, dude? Doing good, Matt. Thanks. So, Pete, you actually make a machine that works with this, but what is this product here? This is a, a steel reinforcement product that can actually replace a lot of structural rebar. In some applications, it can replace pretty much all of it. It could almost eliminate it. Almost. There's still areas of high stress that are going to need it. And of course, your connection steel between your footings and walls and that kind of thing that we obviously can't deal with. But. Got it. So this is called Steel X. Yes. These are like mini pieces of rebar yep. that get into the mix, get, get basically into the concrete mix, That's right. such that, uh, here's a core sample of it. I don't know if you can tell on the camera, but like if I rotate this, you can kind of see the the shininess of the metal sticking out. So this is like a fiber almost. Yep. It would be in the whole mix, and it's going to give strength. That's right. To the concrete mix. That, that's right. Yeah. And this was actually developed, go on thirty years ago, I believe, originally for. Wow the military. So it's not even new tech, really. It's not even new tech, no. It, it was used for blast proof, uh, blast resistant, I should say, uh, applications for the military for, for war areas. <laughs> that kind of thing. Back originally when it was developed. So yeah. they're going to hit a bunker with a missile. They want to have this that's in there right. to that's right. uh, have less blowout, basically. That's right. Oh, that's yeah. crazy town. Yeah. Yeah, and then cool. your company, how, how do you pronounce that name? Pajco Technologies. Pajco Technologies yes. makes this big gray unit. That's right. Which is what? This is a dispenser system for it. And it a blower, basically. It okay. blows it up into the concrete truck so they can just mix into the concrete then. So, so. your guys are, or when you're on the job and you're using it, you're dumping all that in here. There's a yep. huge bin of this right here. Yep. This gets dumped in here. And then this, this auger. This raises up, slides it down into here. And there's a tumbler drum that tumbles and just breaks up all the, the clumps and stuff. Think of uh, a bunch of toothpicks and stuff. You know, you, they get kind of hold together yep. type of deal. And that tumbler just breaks it all up, blows it into the mix so that there's no balls and stuff in the concrete truck. So in that, so let's say you've got a 10 yard truck and that's just tumbling as you're putting it in. Yep. So that now when that tumbles, it's thoroughly through all 10 yards. That's right. And then is there anything special? Like, can you not pump it after that because it's got the fiber in you there? Can, yeah. Or? yeah, you can pump it. You can, uh, well, put it through a 3D printer. Is that right? Um, you can do basically anything with it you can do with regular concrete. Wow, that's pretty wild. And yeah. I saw in the video, your machine is small enough to even fit in a pickup truck. That's right. Uh, and so I guess in theory, you could haul a bunch of boxes up to the top of the truck and your guys could haul, uh, you know, thousand pounds or more per truck of this material into the back of the concrete truck. But this yep. is gonna, if you're a contractor who's doing this work, it's. It's yep. many, many yards of concrete. That and the safety aspect, you know, especially nowadays, ready mix companies simply won't allow a contractor to oh, crawl yeah. up on top of their truck or anything right. like that. So this keeps everybody down on the ground where it's safe and uh, nobody has to climb up there. Now, no one's using this probably for a driveway or a garage slab, right? This is, I'm guessing this is more like, you know, you're building an industrial building, you're building, you know, what I think of as like a Costco, this yes. you know, 30,000 square foot yes. slab. There's gonna be, there's where they're gonna use there's that There's gonna product. be multiple pallets or even semis worth of product that are gonna be used on a job that this is used on usually. Oh, that's wild. Yeah. Really appreciate it, man. Yeah, Thanks for likewise. taking time for me. I'll put a link yeah. in the description for both these products uh, below, but World of Concrete, you never know what you're gonna find. Super fun, we'll see you Absolutely. later. Thanks, Matt. World of Concrete 2024, what a wild show inside, outside, tools, materials, all kinds of stuff. You know, as a builder, as a general contractor, I need to know a little bit about everything. But man, if you're a concrete specialty contractor, this is the place to be. I saw some 
really cool stuff. Big thanks to my friends at World of Concrete for bringing me out today. By the way, if you don't know, Informa that runs the World of Concrete show and also runs Journal of Construction Live has partnered with us to bring you Build Show Live 2024. So in November of this year in Austin, Texas, my town, we've got Build Show Live coming up. Link in the description so you can sign up for updates. It's gonna be a fabulous show. My whole team from the Build Show is gonna be providing all the educational portion, including a tour of my personal house, a tour of a house that I'm gonna be building that you're gonna see called the Reisinger Build Under Construction, a 20 part video series. Plus I'm gonna try and get a couple of my builder friends to open up their houses for tours. That's gonna be a lot of fun guys. Link in the description for that. But if you're not currently a subscriber, hit that subscribe button below. You know we've got new content every Tuesday and every Friday. Follow me on TikTok or Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on the Build Show.